I've always struggled with seasonal depression. In Canada, the winter days are short, and the nights are so very long. There are times when it feels like we haven't seen the sun in years, and any of its warmth is absent from our lives. This is the same for the Scandinavian people, but they have learned to embrace it in ways that I think we could learn from. While much of their cultural wisdom, like there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing, and FICA, the Swedish slow coffee break, could be embraced by those of us closer to the poles, today I would specifically like to share about Hyuga. Miles in spring, rainbow trout and hummingbird playing. Golden, I'll follow you. Golden, golden, golden things. Gold hair, gold rings. I was introduced to the concept of Hyuga nearly a decade ago. I've always enjoyed the lifestyle genre of books, and when The Little Book of Hyuga by Mike Viking hit bookshelves, I was immediately drawn to it. Hyuga, in essence, is the Danish word for cozy, but it's so much more than that. Once it becomes a part of your life, it's easy to see what was missing. Within language, Hyuga is both a noun and a verb. You might say, I have Hyuga, or I Hyuga with my friends. Hyuga leg is an adjective. That's a Hyuga leg blanket, or that cat is so Hyuga leg. But as someone who doesn't speak Danish, that is the extent of my knowledge there. Also, please excuse my pronunciation. I am trying my best. Yes, yoga means cozy, but it's a cozy that's more than the coziness of a warm blanket. More than the coziness of a fire. It's the coziness of a moment spent in candlelight with loved ones, with the winter winds howling outside, a favorite playlist on in the background, maybe jazz if you're like me. Treating yourself to some freshly baked cookies and drinking a warm chamomile tea, it's all encompassing. Hyuga in many ways has defined my adult life. I have been subconsciously striving for this homey feeling for the good part of a decade. I am at my most content in these moments of connection and presence. And the thing about Hyuga is it's an art form. You are the designer of your ideal Hyuga League moment. You were just, you were just lost, you were just lost. But now you found and you realize it wasn't at all like what you created in your mind. It wasn't even nice. You wasted all your time. You didn't even like him in real because such a key part of Hyuga is contentment, it's difficult for me to tell you what you need to achieve this feeling, but I will try my best. Above all, I have become a more thankful person and cherish the things that I have since introducing this into my life. And the things that I've introduced have often been gifts, heirlooms, antiques, or pieces that have a story like the dresser I received for my most recent birthday was found at a local thrift shop. After bringing it home and finding a corner where it would live, we removed the drawers and found it was from the year 1848. Oh, the stories this dresser could tell. 
Who knows the journey it might have made to get here? Sometimes we build our own stories with objects in our possession. Like the hutch passed down to me from my mother, who got it from her father, who got it from his mother, that I spent a whole week attempting to sand down and refinish only to then paint it after realizing that some parts just couldn't be saved. And other times, the objects in our home represent a memory, like the stamps from our trip to Barcelona, the book from that time we went to Marrakesh, or the art from our engagement in France. These things bring us joy and hold meaning. Each piece I bring into our home has intention. I don't buy for a season, I buy for life. I don't bring anything into our home unless I believe it could be with us forever. Sustainability is another keystone of Hugo. Being in harmony with the world, with nature, this idea that we're all connected, that we all can do our part, no matter how seemingly small. Bringing plants into our space, elements of wood, stone, natural fibers, these also connect us to the natural world. This goes hand in hand with indulgence. Little luxuries are also Hugo. That's another reason to shop antiques. Quality. Luxury isn't a designer label slapped on, it's care and craftsmanship, attention to detail, something that's built for the generations. They used to make things to last, there was no planned obsolescence. A space isn't created by just bringing individual elements in. It evolves, it changes to meet your needs. It must be lived in, experienced, and added to in other ways than just bringing your furniture in from a store. Atmosphere is key to Hugo, evoking a sense of calm, a retreat from the outside world. This can be achieved with things like lighting, cleanliness, fragrance, and flow. Think of how lighting affects us, how you feel in the glow of candlelight, how you feel when the sun bathes your face. I urge you to shut off the big light in the evenings. Allow your body to ready itself for ever essential sleep. Light the candles, light the lamps, keep it soft, keep it low. And just as the natural darkness prepares us for the night, so does the brightness ready us to take on the day. Open the curtains, greet the sun each morning. Think of cleanliness as a way to evoke calm. Clutter can detract away from that. Your home is an opportunity for peace, an oasis from the chaos, a retreat from the outside world. Caring for your things is a way to value what you have. I know it is easier said than done. I know it's difficult when not everyone in your home is on your side. I know our mental state can often get in the way. For me, what's helped the most is giving everything a home. This hasn't always been easy especially within my old studio apartment, but it does make a difference. I find clutter piles are often a result of those things not having a place of their own. I also abide by the one-touch rule. No picking up and moving things in hopes that it will go back to where it came from eventually, just returning it immediately to the place where it lives. I make time to keep a tidy house because it's something that I value and it's important to make time for the things that you value. Think of fragrance as a way to infuse warmth, a personality, put on a simmer pot, bake something fresh, pull out the essential oils. 
Sometimes the best thing that you can do for your space is to let the fresh air in. It's natural. It's healthy. I know in the winter it's not the most enticing idea, but open the window, even if it's just for a moment or two. Think of flow as how we arrange our space. Our space should have balance, harmony. Bring balance with color, with contrast, with size, with texture. These things should be evenly distributed throughout a room. Don't let any one object overpower. The goal is to let our eyes dance on through. Think of how people might interact in the environment, how you might need to use this space. Do you have a place to put down your mug when sitting over there? Is there a blanket you can cuddle up in within sight? Do your keys always somehow end up in that one spot when you come in the door, regardless of how you've tried to implement a new habit? It's easier to work with the grain than against it. Togetherness is another foundation of Hugo. Memories are made when we're together. Host, share, invite others in. Candles encourage conversations, dinners at the dinner table, homemade meals not only feeds us and feed our souls, but creates a warm, lived-in kitchen. Host, share, invite others in. Being present is a way to show others, hey, I value you. Turn off the TV, put away your phone, host, share, invite others in. It can be challenging in our world today. The busyness doesn't allow for community. In a way, togetherness is how we push back and take a stand, loving each other, connecting, even when we're meant to be ever productive robots. When did the grind, the hustle, being busy become more important than other people. Hugo is a vessel for turning that around. I remember the first time we met face to face. Kiss on my neck, how could I forget something that hasn't happened yet? Keep in mind that Hyuga doesn't happen overnight. A Hyugalig home, a Hyugalig life takes time. I've been familiar with this concept for almost a decade now and have been crafting my space with coziness in mind since then. I love Hyuga and I think everyone can benefit from a little bit of it in their life especially those of us where winter can be unkind. Have you heard of Hugo? Will you try to further implement it into your life? If you're interested in learning more about it, I do have a blog post in the description which includes a list of books to read. In my next video, 
I'd like to share how I've infused this concept into my personal style, so please let me know any questions that you may have. All of my best, Kate.